you know, and 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 it's. But guess what? God is just not gonna. He's just not gonna snap his finger and do it. Guess what? We have the awesome privilege of being used by God to be His hands, be Jesus' hands and feet. You know, to go out into our community, to make a difference in our community. All the awareness, you know, that we can bring. And God's, you know, allowed this house here, New Life Worship Center, to be a place, you know, this week where so many people will come in to this, to this building, you know, to celebrate a life. And you guys have an opportunity to love on people who may not have ever even set foot into a church. So that's a, that's a pretty great responsibility. And those are some of the first steps to healing. You know, at our church, you know, I've heard some of the pastors say the best way to, uh, to get yourself past your circumstances and, and, and what you're going through is to help somebody else in their circumstances. You know, if, if, if you can look past God, well, why is my life like this? Or why am I experiencing this? Guess what? There's somebody else out there that's experiencing hurt. Every day there's somebody out there that's experiencing hurt and pain. And, you know, they may not have a mom or dad. They may not have someone in their life that, that cares about them. But God cares about them. And guess what? You may be that person that can say that kind word or that smile or, or give them a hug or just... Just, just say that kind word to them. So I want to give you guys a few things and, and, um, and hopefully you'll be able to pull from them. But uh, just four ways to look at the season you're in. And um, if you've got something to write with, that's cool. If not, uh, maybe we can get these uh, emailed to, uh, to Uncle Jimmy and them to get to you guys. Because I just feel like this is something that, that I'm not just telling you that I just came up with. I'm telling you because I've experienced this and I've walked through this. And my faith has been built by that, by the, these things. And uh, so number one is how you respond to adversity determines your destiny. However you respond to a difficult season in your life is going to determine, determine the path that you go on. You know, and like we said earlier, God's going to give you Sometimes he's going to allow some, some hard circumstances into your life. Life is going to get hard, you know. Um, in a way, it's like sometimes I look at somebody's life and, you know, you, you, you compare your life. You're like, oh, man, you think their life's perfect. Nobody's life's perfect. But you have to look at your life and say, "How? okay, God, this is, this is, a, this is a hard thing. How am I going to respond to this? And in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, this is what it says. I want to read this, this scripture to you. And you've probably heard this. And we know that all things, in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And I, you know, I quoted that scripture earlier. Everything, everything that happens under the sun, everything that happens in life is all part of God's purpose. It may not look like it. That's where faith comes in. We, we can't see what God's doing, but in that, he's working in us. Second thing, don't allow the season that you're in determine your value. You know, I see so many times young people, they'll look at, you know, maybe the home that they're growing up in or the house that they live in or, or the season that they're going through or, you know, whatever it is. Maybe their self-image. Uh, they'll let that kind of determine their value. How many knows your value is not determined by anybody in this room uh, anybody outside of this building, your value is determined in God and who you are in God. Because He created you. He knows everything about you. He knows the little quirks and, and everything about you, the, the, the little nitpicky ways about you because you've been, uh, you, you've been uniquely and fearfully and wonderfully made. That's what the Bible says. So you may look at yourself and say, well, God, why can't I be like this person or why can't I be like that person? Don't ever fall into that trap. Because you, you, you will never measure up to anybody else. Because guess what? You weren't supposed to be anybody else but you. So you'll never measure up. So find out what it is that's unique about you and say, God, how can I take this uniqueness in me to glorify you? So don't let the season that you're in determine your value. James chapter 1 uh, verse 2 says this, and it's, it's, it's talking about... Uh, perseverance and, and going through difficult things. Let me get to it here. It's one of them baby books in the back. 
James chapter 1 verse 2, and this, is, this goes along with Romans chapter 5, same thing. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. And here's, here's, here's the key verse, verse 4. Perseverance must finish its work. So that tells me that, okay, we, we have to have hard times in our life. We have to have difficult things. If things always were perfect, let's just think about this. If you got everything that you wanted in life, just, I mean, you snapped your finger, and hey, we, we, got, a little, we got a little four-year-old Elijah, and this little fella thinks that, hey, if he wants it, he's going to get it. He'll throw a fit, he'll do, and, and hey, we're working through it. I mean, he is four, and it's just like, I mean, he gets a spanking pretty much every day. But he's got to learn that, guess what, in life, you don't get everything that you want. Life's not always going to be a box of chocolates. Okay, this isn't Forrest Gump, right? So, life is not easy, but this is, verse 4 says, Perseverance must finish its work. So that you may be mature and complete and lacking in nothing. God doesn't want us to lack in anything. But guess what? It says his strength is made perfect in our weakness. So those weaknesses and those things that you may think that, God, why am I this way? Why is this uniqueness about me that, that others may look at me and say, you know, maybe point out and see it as a negative. Guess what? Those negatives are his positives. That weakness that you may have that you think is a weakness, weakness in your life. His strength is going to be made perfect in that. And it says, without perseverance, you're not going to be mature. You're not going to be complete for every good work that He's called you to. Third thing right here, God doesn't have a plan B for your life. He doesn't. It's, it's always been plan A. Everything that you do, that you've thought about doing, that you will ever do, He knows about it. And I know sometimes it's hard, uh, it's hard as a 30-year-old, I'm sure, you know, as you get older, it's still hard to wrap your mind around that. Well, God, you know, you know, I have, you gave me free will and, you know, you don't know. He, he knows. And guess what? Plan A is in action the whole time. There's, no, there's never been a plan B. In 2 Timothy, this is what it says. I want to read this scripture to you. It's pretty cool. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Verse 8, it says right here, this is, this is actually Paul talking to Timothy. And Paul is actually in prison. I mean, this guy was in prison, shipwrecked, all over the place. And he never ceased to just encourage. I mean, this guy, you talk about seasons, like bad seasons. It was like he was always in the middle of the storm. But he was in prison, and so he's writing this letter to Timothy. And he says, so do not be ashamed to testify about our faith in the Lord, or be ashamed of me his prisoner. He's like, hey, don't be ashamed of me. I'm just sitting in jail, but I just want to encourage you, right? But join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God who has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything that we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. We can't earn his, pur his grace. You know, he has purpose in our lives. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. That's another one to kind of try to wrap your mind around. That before the beginning of time, He had a purpose for you. And you, you, each and every one of you. And guess what? This situation and these things that you're experiencing right now, guess what? They were for you. It's, it sounds, uh, you know, as, as we look back at, at the season that we walked through with, with, with Esther's dad and brother, and it's like, God, why? You know, you question why. What, what, you know, you, you go through every scenario and try to figure out, well, what, if, what if we would have done this? Or what if they wouldn't have done that? God, it's all still part of what God is doing. It's still part of the process. And like we said, there will be a time of, of grieving. There will be a time of healing. There will be a time when, when thoughts may come in and, and you may grieve a little bit more. Okay? But there's, God is just, he, He'll continue to bring peace through His Holy Spirit. You know, thank God he's get his, the Holy Spirit is our comforter. It brings peace. It brings peace. You know, God says he'll bring peace to the brokenhearted. Okay? So, as we go through that process, he is, he is continually making us stronger. And, but, but like I said, this, this is an opportunity for you to, to, to experience this, but not just experience it and, and, and not do anything with it. You know, sometimes I've thought in my life, when I've gone through difficult things... 
And man, if I sat down and, and, I, and, I, and I thought about this one time, if I just sat down and wrote down all the difficult things that I've been through in my life, you know, just the difficult scenarios and, and you know, things that I've done or, or things that people have done to me or, or neglect or, or just, you know, maybe, maybe being overlooked or, or rejection and di just different things in life because we all experience those things in life. If I was to write all those things down, I'd probably be like, man, how in the world am I still walking around with a smile on my face? But guess what? All those things were part of the process of me becoming who I am today. And being, as, as even harder things come, and my faith is built, and the perseverance and character and all those things is built, when those difficult times come, it's easier to sustain, to sustain the blows. But not just easier to sustain the blows, but it's not, it's not necessarily for me. It's going to be for others around me who may not be quite where I'm at yet. And we can walk through... The, God designed this thing for others to be there for each other. That's what community is about. That's why the church as a body, it's, it's one body. You know, to work together and, and be a community and be a family and walk through, you know, the good times and the bad times, the hard things and difficult things. But at the same time, you know, some will be further along. And I, I keep on saying that to you guys about the situation you're in, I just feel like God's speaking that as, as weird as it sounds, I just believe it's God that it's, it's a gift. It's a, it's, a, it's a gift in a way because you've been given an opportunity to take something that might, that might be too much for someone else. But he's given you an opportunity to take that in and walk through this together so that six months down the road, a year down the road, ten years down the road, you're going to be able to stand in front of someone going through the same thing and be able to say, you know what? I've been there. I've walked through it and I've come out on the other side through my faith in God and my faith in, in, in people around me who I'm accountable to, my pastors, my parents, you know, friends in my life. And you're going to be able to walk through a difficult season with someone else who may have no clue how to even pick up their hair, or even get out of bed. And that's how I've looked at difficult times in our lives, that, okay, God, I'm, I'm going to take that. I'm not, I'm not going to throw a pity party. I'm, you know, there, there's going to be grieving, but God, help this difficult thing that I'm walking through. Help it to build my faith and my endurance and the things that you want to do in me. Does that make sense? So he doesn't have a plan B. It's always been plan A. And number four, and, and I want to just hang on this for a few minutes. And it ties into what I just said. Your greatest ministry will come out of your greatest suffering. Out of the hardest things that you'll experience in life. That you, I mean, when you're in the middle of it, you're just like, God, I can't do this. I can't handle the pressure. I can't handle the pain. I can't handle, uh, I, I, I can't handle the burden, God. But through the most difficult things you do in life, you're going to be able to touch so many lives through that. And you know how I know? The greatest example of all. You think about Jesus Christ. What was his greatest suffering? It was when he hung on that cross. And because of his... The, I mean, the, the greatest suffering that any man could go through, he went through and he died for our sins. But that was, that was his greatest ministry to mankind. He preached to the thousands. He healed the blind. He raised the dead. He did all those things. He turned water into wine. He, I mean, fed the 5,000. He did all those things. But his, the greatest thing that he did was the most difficult thing that he did. The most difficult road that he had to walk, carrying that cross up to that hill, was the most difficult thing. But that was the greatest thing that he had. That was the greatest thing ever. The greatest thing ever. But it was the hardest thing that he ever had to do. That any man ever had to do. So, if I could just, man, just encourage you guys and, and to, to embrace the season that you're in. Because, like I said, you can never get it back. And God gives seasons to us as gifts. Some are fun. Some, you know, there's just, you know, God's favors all over it and things are great and everybody's happy. But then there, there are seasons that may get a little dark. You may not be able to see what's next. 
But that's where you got to stay in this. It's our light. I mean, because I tell you what, it is easy, easy, easy to get lost. That world's dark. It's dark out there. And they, I mean, every social media, movies, music, television, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, it doesn't matter what, and all those things are great. All those things are great if, if, if they're used the right way. But I said there's, there's some traps you can fall into comparing yourselves to others. You know, being tra trying to keep up with the Joneses. You've got to be thankful for what's, what God's given you. You've got to be content with where God has you. Now, does that mean that you, all right, God, this is where I'm at. I think I'm going to hang out here for the rest of my life. No. You've got to challenge yourself. You've got to push yourself. You've got to stretch your faith. You know, you, I mean, it's, you've you got to do your part. But I can promise you, God's going to allow some difficult things. You know, I think of Job. You know, I mean, sometimes when I, when I feel down, I, I'll read a little bit of Job. And then I start feeling really good. Really good about how I got it. You know, I feel so blessed uh, to, to have my wonderful wife and my children. And, you know, I look back at all the, the difficult things that I've been through. Death and just, just, just different things. But God, looking back, God has always been faithful. He is so faithful when we're not. And that's the amazing thing about God. And that's why I love him so much. So, uh, guys, Esther and I are here tonight, you know, to, uh, to just be a support. I know, that, I know that the church and the pastors and, and some of the leaders, uh, even in the community, ha have been here for you guys. But, um, you know, I don't, I don't know... Um, I don't know where you guys are at right now, uh, you know, individually. I don't know where you're at, uh, you know, emotionally and spiritually, but, but you do. And I believe that, that, uh, that God can bring peace uh, in the midst of the storm. He can bring peace to your mind, to your heart. Uh, you know, there may, be, there may be others that are questioning you, you know. Uh, right now, this is th usually when 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 tragedies happen and when difficult things happen. You know, a lot of people, you know, direct their eyes towards the church. You know, and and they may look at you and say, "Oh, you know, Stephen, he I, I, he's a Christian. I I think his dad's a pastor. You know, I don't I don't understand I don't understand what's going on right now. I got some questions." You know, uh, you know what's what's life about? Or, you know what what happens after you die? Or you know what happens? You know why wh why are you guys happy all the time? You know even when hard things are going, it, you have an opportunity to share your faith. You have an opportunity to share Jesus Christ with others. But guess what? Sometimes in difficult times, you, you need a you need a little bit of questions answered. You need a little bit of prayer and support and somebody that that you can lean on, right? So I don't know. I, I want to I pray for you guys. I don't know... Uh...